Bengal, thousands of miles away from the U.S. Midwest, India too is facing the shivers due to the Arctic blast. The Met Department has said that North India's unusually long and cold winter could be linked to the cold blast from the Arctic region. Now, seven western disturbances hit North India this year, bringing along with it cold, moist winds, snow and rain. Most uh, years, the number of western disturbances hitting the North India is only four. The hilly states of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir were the worst hit by the unusually cold winter. Several areas in these states uh, battle sub-zero temperatures for most of December and January. Normal life has been affected, trains delayed and flights cancelled as well in most parts of North India through December and January. Now, the mercury dropped to a record low in Srinagar this winter, something that this summer capital had not seen in 28 years. On the 27th of December, Srinagar recorded minus 7.2 degrees Celsius, which is 8 degrees below normal. And those visuals are on your screens of Srinagar. And other areas of Jammu and Kashmir like Leh, Gulmarg, Dras, Kopwara saw a very harsh winter as well. And while well, heavy snow also covered Himachal in white with Kulu, Manali, Shimla, Ki uh, and other, other areas battling sub-zero temperatures as well. And the Indian capital of New Delhi too wasn't spared. On the 2nd of January this year, Delhi broke a 43-year-old record. The Indian capital recorded a maximum temperature of a mere 9.8 degrees Celsius. This was 11 notches below the average and was unheard of in decades. And Delhi has also experienced its coldest December morning this winter with a record 3.7 degrees Celsius at, uh, at this uh, winter. And it's not just, uh, well, and it's not just rap yet, but the bitter winter, uh, the disruption of the polar vortex and the Indian Med Department has now forecasted fresh snowfall across the western Himalaya region, uh, that is Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. So while we're seeing all kinds of weather patterns, particularly harsh winters across the globe, and the Met Department, well worldwide, the meteorologists actually have blamed the phenomenon called polar vortex for the bitter cold that has descended on much of central and eastern United States this week, forcing residents to huddle indoors, closing schools and businesses and cancelling flights. As ominous uh, uh, as the term polar vortex sounds, now meteorologists say that the phenomenon is not new. There is some debate, however, among scientists about whether polar vortex uh, is, uh, have become more frequent and if so, what effect climate change might have on them. A polar vortex refers to an upper level jet stream that typically circulates uh, a wind pattern essentially around both the north and south poles, keeping the coldest air there. This winter in the US, uh, it happens to be well, pretty extreme uh, example of some of the cold Arctic air making it down to the US, so basically breaking its vertex and moving towards the US. The potentially record shattering low temperatures descending on a large swath of the country may touch of a political debate over global warming. Scientists say studies offer evidence that the stratosphere over the Arctic is changing and so disruptions to the polar vortex are increasing. Scientists say higher temperatures in the Arctic have led to historically low levels of ice that in turn has led to changes in the jet stream causing the polar vertex to buckle. Even as India and China remain engaged to resolve bilateral issues, the U.S. believes ties between the two sides will remain tense this year. The conclusion has been made in the latest worldwide threat assessment report of the U.S. intelligence. Now, U.S. intelligence agencies have noted that the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Chinese President Xi Jinping are trying to improve ties between the two countries. However, while addressing the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, the director of the U.S. National Intelligence, Dan Coates, said border issues will continue to bedevil ties between India and China. He said, and I quote, misperception of military movements or construction uh, might result in tensions escalating into armed conflict. We expect relations between India and China to remain tense despite efforts on both sides to manage tensions since the border standoff in 2017, elevating the risk of unintentional escalation. Coase also cited 
The friction between the two sides over Beijing's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, India has strongly criticized the China-Pakistan economic border, which is part of the Belt and Road Initiative as it passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Now, it's a direct fallout of the financial mess in which Jet Airways finds itself. The airline has cancelled several of its flights from Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Bengaluru after five of its aircrafts were grounded for non-payment of lease rentals. Nineteen Jet Airways flights have been hit with debts of about $1.14 billion. Uh, Jet has been unable to cope with the fierce competition from other low-cost carriers, rupee depreciation and high oil prices. The company owes money to banks, pilots, vendors, lessers and some whom are considering, of course, taking back the aircrafts as well in, for, for the debt. Jet Airways creditors, State Bank of India is likely to own 15% of the airline if the cash-strapped carrier's proposal to seal a debt for equity swap is approved. The airline has called for a well, a general body meeting of its shareholders tomorrow. The company will seek shareholders' approval to allow the board to raise further loans within the existing borrowing limit of 25,000 crore rupees under the provisions of the Companies Act. We're switching tracks now. And if you, your ideal hotel stay includes sleeping with sausage pillows surrounded by salami style wallpapers, then it's time to head to Germany. A, a sausage themed hotel offers its guests a unique experience which could be heaven for some but absolutely appalling for others. What happens when a German butcher opens a hotel? Well, a vegetarian's worst nightmare. Sausages on the wallpaper, sausage-shaped pillows and bratwurst hanging from the ceiling. This is Germany's sausage-themed hotel in northern Bavaria. The room numbers are printed on butcher's knives and even the soaps look like sausages. And in Franconia, the bratwurst is a cloud and I love that. I like to travel myself and I always like it if it is a bit different. And in Franconia, the bratwurst is a culinary specialty. So I just wanted to get a bit of a holiday feeling in my house, connect guests from all over the world with the Franconian sausage and make the bratwurst attractive for the whole world. The hotel's slogan, sleeping under a bratwurst sky, is not just a marketing tactic. Single rooms start at 78 euros a night, while a double room costs 98 euros. They all include breakfast with a healthy helping of, well, sausage of course. The restaurant downstairs serves a full range of sausage related dishes including sausage ice cream. There is a sausage restaurant to eat here at the Bratwurst Hotel. Our name is what we do. There is everything related to Bratwurst. So for example, there is a sausage schnitzel or instead of a Zwiebel Rose Braten, an onion roast sausage or just dessert such as a Bratwurst baked apple or Bratwurst ice cream. So there is literally only Bratwurst but in any possible form. And before leaving for home, guests can even stock up on meats at the hotel's shop or take a cooking course. This is one hotel no vegetarian would ever want to step in though. Bureau Report, we on World is One. Well, imagine a town with several borders but no walls or fences. Bali is a Belgian-Dutch town that has 30 borders but no divisions. We take you on a short trip. The residents of the small town of Barle are used to getting the best and the worst of two worlds, literally as it is located at the border of Belgium and the Netherlands. This line separates the two countries, running through a town of 12,000 people. They have two local governments, two mayors, two postal services and two school systems. For businesses, the dual legislation is a big asset, as they are free to choose between Dutch and Belgian utilities. For example, Dutch Barle Nassau is the place to go for food and Belgian Barle Hertog for cigarettes and gas. The good thing is that everybody can go shop things where they want. They can go to school what they look for the best for their children. They can go shop in a Holland uh, uh, wing, uh, a, sh a shop or they go go to the, the petrol in Belgium that's cheaper. The cigarettes are cheaper in Belgium. 
So people are moving over and they, 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 they take where it is best. Yeah? Problem is that you have uh, sometimes have to do things double. And for instance, with, uh, when your house is half Belgium, half Holland, you have to pay taxes in two countries and things like that. Until the Netherlands followed Belgium into the Eurozone in 2002, locals had to even carry two different currencies. You have to always keep in mind that you know, there are, that's a border and you have people working for the Dutch company or for the Belgian company. So it depends on uh, in which company they work. Uh, that means that they also have different holidays. Um, for example, there's a Belgium national holiday, then the, the guys who work in the Dutch company, they will be here and we have an advantage because there is always somebody in the company also on those kind of days. So we have uh, for the service, it's uh, a good job that, they, uh, that there is always somebody available to help our clients. The 30 enclave patchwork that is Barl traces its history from medieval landlords exchanging territory but deciding to keep the most cultivated profitable parts. In 1843, the main border between Belgium and the Netherlands was established. But the situation around Barla was so complicated that the border was left open until the 1970s, when it became a hotspot for smugglers. As neither Belgian nor Dutch national legislation provided for situations where a house could straddle national borders, the local authorities were forced to establish a front door rule meaning that the property based its address on which way its front door was facing. In 1995, by fixing our enclave borders, we have had a very special occasion. There was living an old lady, uh, let's say 86 years, and uh, the commission had found out that she was not living in Belgium, but she was living in the Netherlands. So they told the lady, you have to change your passport because you are living in the Netherlands. No, she said, I will never do that because I'm Belgium. So that was a big problem. And then the mayor has gone to the lady to find out what the problem exactly was. And they saw the situation and the solution was so simple. There was a door party with one side the door, one side the window. And by turning around those, this, this frame, 180 degrees, the problem was fixed because then the door was on Belgium again and the lady was happy again. So despite conflicts in the past, the locals are proud of their unique identity and enjoy the best of both countries. Bureau Report, World is One.